my name is Christian and I actually used to be like many of you who are right now like students um, at the University um, of Hoes and West Flanders. Um, so my story starts in uh, Kortrijk and then I actually had the opportunity to move for an internship to Cambridge um, which I actually really enjoyed. Uh, I had a really good time over there but it also allowed me to go to a conference in the US and there I met some people from Berkeley so this is actually where I ended up, like I've been here almost for one and a half years and I have to say it's not that bad. Um, we were actually sailing like, with some of the people who are sitting in the audience right now last weekend. It was just amazing on the bay. So um, today I actually wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, front end tools. Um, like everybody has these awesome technologies and playing around a little bit and like demoing it. But like what is the actual workflow behind it? And, how do you work together in a team effectively? Um, like I'm just going to show five tools in general and also give some live demos, so bear with me. Um, to me, it also feels that you know, a lot of developers are you know, just looking over the shoulder. They're just using a shovel. Well, we actually have, I think we used this word before, a well-oiled machines. Um, and I'll try to sh demo sh some of them. Um, the first one. Um, is actually editor config. I don't know, has anybody heard about it before? Okay, no hands, I love this, yes. Um, because it's very recently, but it's actually in jQuery and Modernizer, like two projects that probably almost everybody knows. Um, so let me give you a very short demo how it actually works. So let me open my Sublime. So this is how it looks like. Um, it basically has like a bunch of configuration settings. Um, like some people like to use spaces, some people like to use tabs, but what this is actually gonna do is make everything automatically. Um, so when you're saving a file, it's just gonna set the right char set. It's gonna make sure that the end of lines, like if you're on Linux or Windows, that you're using the same thing. Um, also inserting your final new line, I don't know if anybody used GitHub before and just saw like, please enter like a new line in there. Uh, so that's gonna fix it for you and the thing I actually liked most about it, it's gonna trim your white spaces because like if somebody gives you a pull request and you see those ugly white spaces and you know, it just feels bad that just for that one reason you need to go back to them. Um, so basically like I have a file in here, uh, the pink things are all just um, white spaces at the end and what I'm just gonna do is like save the file so everything, the white spaces are gone and every single time uh, you're going to be doing this, it's just going to work. Um, I would highly recommend just anybody on a project where there's more than just one person just to include this file. Um, next up is Live Reload. Um, so many of designers and front-end developers, like the usual workflow, what they're doing is, you know, they have work in their editor, they save this CSS or the HTML, go to the browser and refresh every single time. And if you're a front-end developer and you do that the whole day, like 50 times, 100 times, that actually adds up a lot, especially if you think around the whole year. So what Live Road actually will do is, as soon as you're saving a file, it's automatically gonna refresh in the browser. Um, I'm just showing uh, an Instagram feed here uh, from Belgian Beer. Um, and you know, let's just try it out a little bit. Um, so I'm just gonna comment out this line. And as you can see, I didn't like tab over to my browser. I just hope my Wi-Fi actually works. So it seems to be fine. So the background just changed. And I'm actually going to do one more. Uh, so this should be the tag for US USA. So some of you guys should be recognizing some of the pictures in there, I guess. Um, it's just like that one little extra step, but it definitely adds up um, after a while. Um, it's actually used by big projects as well. Um, but people are taking this to the next level. Um, so Live Reload has been there for a while. Um, so what you actually can like, there's a great demo from Paul Roger where he's actually, when he's saving it, it's live editing. The difference there, it's not gonna completely refresh your page, just the part that you changed. So that's actually really cool. Um, and the next one is, this is actually built into Chrome right now, where you can just save the file within your browser. You don't need to leave your browser anymore. 
But personally, I still like my IDE, and maybe that will move in the browser soon, but that's not happening. That ha hasn't happened yet. Uh, it also works with CoffeeScript, SaaS, um, or like any of the other frameworks out there. Um, next up for me is um, Grunt. How many people are familiar with that or heard about it? OK, that's more hands. OK. Um, so what Grunt actually is going to do is going to be um, the JavaScript task runner. Like you can run a bunch of tasks in your command line. Um, I think it was mentioned before by Thomas sitting in the first row here. Uh, he mentioned that he was actually minifying his files. Um, like you can do that just every single time manually, but if you have some kind of build script that does it for you, it's just way cooler. So let me just demo that a little bit in here as well. Um, so I'm going to maximize this. Uh, so let's clear this. Um, so let's just run the grunt command. What it's going to do right now is actually going to lint my code, which is actually going to check for errors. Uh, like if I, for instance, like crash the app a little bit instead, and then try to run grunt, what you're going to see is, wow, OK, this is really clear to me what's actually happening. It's completely broken. Um, you can go back, just change it. It actually has more than just the task that I'm running in here, like minifying or linting it. Um, so I would just say test it out. And the nice thing about it is it's completely written in JavaScript. So if you already know JavaScript, definitely use this one as well. Um, the next thing that I sometimes see, like looking over the shoulders for a lot of developers, is that they use an IDE, like they use some kind of text editor, but they're not that familiar with it. Um, I just think it's worthwhile just investigating, uh, just like spending a little bit of time there and like seeing how you can optimize your workflow. Um, my personal favorite right now is Sublime. I switched over from TextMate. I used WebStorm. I used VI. I, I just used a bunch of them. But I just want to get like very familiar with it. Uh, so a couple of the things that I uh, like about it myself um, is just, for instance, like um, switching over to a file. For me, that's just Command T. And any file that's in there, I can just, for instance, if I want to go to my CSS file, just Command T and go into it. The actual, the other thing that you're seeing in here as well is like, what, what are these like, you know, boxes around it? Um, this is actually linting my file on the fly. Um, this is a really nice improvement of just doing it after the build, where you're finding out, okay, these are the errors. This is going to do it before. Um, like one of the things that it's actually saying here is like the universal selector is known to be slow. I'm like, okay, I know. Like this is just CSS for. Uh, making my presentation, so I'm not going to bother with it that much. Um, but the same in JavaScript. Like if we screw this one up, the thing that you could see as well is that little border around it. Uh, the same with semicolons in here. And I don't know if you can actually read the message to them there, but it's like yeah, saying missing semicolon. Um, so OK. Um, and yeah, the, the last one that I wanted to show off is the git gutter. So this is all versions by git. A nice thing about here that you can see on the left-hand side is like these plus symbols of like things that you added or things that you actually removed. Um, all right, up next. Anybody knows about dot files? Raise of hands. OK. OK. <laughs> Just a couple of people. Um, when you're a developer, front-end developer, um, you're going to be spending a lot of time here uh, in the terminal. Um, and I can assure you, you know, that's how it actually is. And just as with your IDE, I would recommend a lot of people like spending some time in there, um, just exploring what it can actually do. Um, so dot files are a list of files, um, just just as your bash or C file, that are going to do like a lot of things out of the box just for you. Um, so for instance, if I want to go one directory up, instead of CDing, I can just do this. And these are just aliases where I can just go to my projects uh, folder. Um, I, and the nice, like the nice, like the one that I really like is the Z command. Um, what the Z command is actually going to do is you have all these directories. Um, I don't ho I hope there's nothing like shaming in there. But I have all these directories in there. Um, and you know, I used to CD into all of them, like every single time, which is 
very annoying and I have to know the whole path and I don't know where I'm at. But like for projects like the, the presentation I'm game, giving right now, I actually spent some time in there. So the only thing I need to do is Z show and automatically it's gonna go into the show off directory. Um, so these are just a bunch of things that are uh, really co cool. Um, there's a bunch of people, uh, this is actually not so clear on the screen, I guess. So there's a bunch of people uh, like Matthias and Paul Irish, I would definitely recommend looking at their files, how they do it. Um, just copy and paste them over and also maybe submit back to them. Like Paul Irish actually uh, merged one of mine. Um, it also shows some um, fancy colors as you could see in here. And actually like, let's look at my div, div statement right now. This, you know, you can do everything in a terminal here and just see the things that I just changed. Um, so let me switch over again. Um, the last one, I'm not actually gonna show this one off, um, but it's coming up more and more and Ruby on Rails, jQuery, Modernizer, big projects are using this right now. Um, Travis CI is an open source uh, continuous integration server. So this actually ties in really well with GitHub. Um, so as soon as you make a pull request, it's gonna start to build automatically. It actually has some integration with Grunt. So you can like link all these different tools together and just like lint the file on the fly. So you don't need to like check out the code locally, check if everything works, check if the build still works. You can do that all for free, um, like on an open source server. Now I'm actually gonna talk a little bit more like to the students directly about things that I've just learned on the fly, uh, like after my college, uh, just three things that I wanted to mention is the way I actually got here in Berkeley is because I had one of my open source projects that actually just took off. I made a jQuery plugin and there were like 15 different developers all around the world, like Japan, there were Chinese websites tweeting about it. And I was like, what is this? Google Translate, okay, it's actually good things they're saying. So I would just recommend everybody like open source. Um, and the same with Dribbble, like if you have any designs, if you're a designer, like put them online, share them with people. Um, you know, and if, if you actually do, people are gonna get back to you. They're gonna make pull requests for you and maybe even like maintain, like there's two other maintainers on the project that I have right now. They're taking over and I'm totally fine with that. Um, and everybody's doing it for a different reason. Um, one of the guys who actually uh, made a pull request to me, he was like, wait, uh, just because of the comments you're giving me, like I learned way more than just in school in two weeks. Um, so for him it was learning, for other people it's making the resume. So I would just say, try doing it. Uh, it definitely will get you further. Uh, the next thing is like take initiative. Actually as the students were doing up here, like show your material, show it up front. Um, again, like tweet about it um, and come outside of your comfort zone. Even if you don't like giving presentations or are a little bit afraid, I guess as most developers are, just do it, try it out, um, and even just make like YouTube videos about the cool stuff you're working on. And last but not least, uh, be passionate, like really love what you do. Um, if you don't, like try something else. There's, we're working in the IT business, there's so many different branches that we can choose from. Um, so, and with that note, I would say thank you very much. Cheers.